Let's get right into the story. All right, check this out. The story I want to start off with, uh, because I think it's such a warm, uh, fuzzy story, is Barack Obama telling black men it's not acceptable to sit out the election. And in my life, and maybe you've experienced this before as well, maybe maybe you've had the experience of somebody lecturing you or scolding you or telling you what to do as if you're a little boy and you're 40 years old, you're 30 years old. And here's an example of that happening, and he's sitting there chewing out, upset with black men, and we have a couple clips reacting by black men on how Obama treated and spoke to young black men. Go, go, go to black men. Go ahead, Rob. Play this clip. And you're thinking about sitting out? <laughs> <laughs> And you're coming up with all kinds of reasons and excuses. Mm-hmm. I've got a problem with that. Yeah, yeah. Because, because part of it makes me think, and I'm speaking to men directly, part of it makes me think that, well, you just aren't feeling the idea of having a woman as president. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's what... That's oh, what it is. Oh, so you Pat, must be bad. It, 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 it's listen. You have to vote like that. You know how disrespectful that is to like just a regular, like just an African American person. That's first of all. Again, I've said this multiple times. She's not African American. She's Jamaican and Indian. Let's put that to the side. But Pat, to, to basically tell them because they know that they're not getting the male vote. This is pleading, like, hey, like it's your duty. Like you have to, as if they're not seeing what's happening to the country, as if they're not seeing illegals getting brought in here. Taking everything that's going to the, you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand, Tom. Well, I it's don't kinda, get it. It's, 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 it's condescending because you're speaking to people as if you are entitled. Yeah. Obama's speaking to them like, hey, we the Democrats, we're entitled to your vote. Mm-hmm. We are entitled. And so, you know, Obama there sounds kind of kind of like a annoyed father. And these people are going, wait a minute, man. I'm just... We're, we may sit this out or we may vote for what we what we think. He should be getting down to the room a bit instead of, oh, maybe you haven't got your head around having a woman vice president. So maybe the problem's you. Yeah. And by the way, he started the campaign when he went and spoke at the NC saying, this is not the campaign of scolding each other. This is not the campaign of lecturing each other. Let's be supportive. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, shit, we're behind the eight ball. No, guys, let's bring out the scolding and the lecturing and yeah. making people feel bad about it. And, and by the way, Rob, if you want to play this clip, here's some people just reacting to him. And, uh, you know, let's see what they have to say to Barack. Go ahead, Rob. Hey, Barack Obama, as a black man, this must be sad, man. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck Kamala Harris and fuck the Democratic Party. We want for Trump, bro. This message is for Barack. Ain't never did a fuck ass thing Ooh. for niggas Ooh. in the eight years he was in the White House ever. Wow. Obama. Why'd you play this? Clip? Keep black yeah. men's name out your motherfucking mouth. Damn, he can't even talk. Man, about if you want to sit your biscuit head ass down somewhere, <laughs> goofy looking motherfucker, like slender man looking motherfucking ass, like anybody trying to listen to you, bro. You didn't get the memo. The community ain't fucking with you, dog. We ain't fucking with you. We ain't got two words for you. It, yes, we do. High and by. We are not fucking with you, B.O. So they well, sent Obama to come get us and bring us back to the Democratic <laughs> plantation. <laughs> <laughs> he like it. He go. sent Obama back to come get us. <laughs> he insulted us. He said, y'all, he insulted. I was highly offended when he said the only reason we voting for Donald Trump is because um, we don't want a woman in president so we come up with oh, yo nigga shut up <laughs> shut up you can pause Democrat. So can i respond to this go ahead I've, I've seen a lot of these videos the best part was when a black guy goes oh so kamala can marry a white man but i have to vote for a black man that's how this worked like i was like that's actually a great point right there so this is the biggest problem that i have with the democratic party right now and it comes down to two words it's identity politics imagine if trump went out there and was like oh you're white if you don't vote for me sir then uh, you're not white you're not I mean, jewish yeah or bernie sanders you don't vote for bernie sanders you're not jewish this is the problem with politics it's identity politics bullshit is that you're putting put in a box and this is how you have to vote sorry you don't have to let do anything you, let me tell you what vote it is. what actually serves you let me tell you what's the worst thing that happens so i've been in this business of 
insurance and driving salespeople for a long time. You know what's the worst thing? Hmm. Is when a guy who, when he was in the game, engaged, driving, gained credibility. Whenever he would have the mic, everybody would be just listening to everything he has to say. Hmm. And then he lost everybody because it was all about him and it was all about his own stuff. And then he goes and comes back two, three years later and he's on the mic speaking. And guess who listens to him? Nobody. It's one of the worst things that happens to someone where you're looking at the reaction you used to get three years ago and you're no longer getting. Barack Obama no longer has mm. the magic he used to have. And, with and, this. He is and, no longer magic Mike, you, magic and, Obama. And you know what? Yeah. He is officially now down to, I hate to say it, annoying Obama. Not, not in a way where, by the way, I, I, I'd sit down and have a conversation with the guy, and I'm sure he's a fun guy to talk to with sports. Of course. I'm sure you'd have a, <clears throat> he's probably a troll or a fun guy's yeah. guy when the cameras are not on. Yeah. But he no longer, that influence that he used to have with this in 2004, in 2008, in 2012, it is gone. It's almost like if now he's coming and he is now trying to save Kamala, watch what happens. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when they used to say, well, look, look at all the candidates that uh, Trump uh, endorsed for the midterms. He no longer has the weight. Mm -hmm. He no longer carries that. No one wants him to endorse anymore. Is it, they, they don't want Trump's endorsement because it actually hurts him. Well, guess what? All those people that gaslit those folks, that's now happening to your Jesus, black Jesus, which is your Obama, for a lot of people in the mainstream media that look at him like that, and he no longer carries the shtick he once used to have. He's just mm. no longer that guy. I commented on one of his posts the other day, and it was like, boom, you know, nonstop messaging coming back. And I told him, I said, I said, I said first of all, Kamala is not who you were in 08. Period. Kamala is not who you were in 12. First no. of all, he is not who he was in 04, 08, or 12. No, He's just no. not. Yeah. I said, Kamala is the worst candidate you guys have ever chosen. And by the way, yes. these guys had a shot at choosing Shapiro, Josh Shapiro, as a VP. Mm -hmm. These guys had a shot at picking Pritzker to go up against Trump to say he's a billionaire as a VP. They could have chosen Newsom as a VP. All more qualified, but no, they go after Walsh. And by the way, here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy. This is the craziest part. Barack Obama, respectfully, because I know you're a strategic guy and you're, you're one of the greatest politicians the left has had in many, many years. Here's respectfully. You know she's not even the number one draft pick. You know if there was a primary and if Biden would have said nine months ago or 12 months ago he's not seeking re-election and there actually was a primary, if Kamala's on stage with Josh Shapiro, with Newsom, with Pritzker, with Whitmer, she may end up last place. Probably yes. so. Not even sitting there picking Tim Walls. Like, can you she imagine your She did it once. Yeah, you're, you're, you're Josh Shapiro. In 2020, she did you're, come in last place. You're Josh place. Shapiro. You're like, dude, you picking me as a VP. I would whoop your yeah. ass on the stage. Yeah. Newsom's like, no, no, no. I'm not interested in being your VP. I'm willing to bet Newsom and Pritzker actually said we don't want to be mm -hmm. the VP nominees. I'm convinced Newsom didn't want that. And she picks a Walls. But the disappointing thing is that he just doesn't have the credibility anymore. And who is now, who are the Democrats going to go to yesterday? I got a call yesterday from a guy from Vanity Fair. And he's asking me about somebody. And he's, he's asking me a question about all these guys. I said, so how do you feel about the fact that, uh, 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 and it was a fair guy. I mean, we'll see how he's going to write the paper when the article comes out. He says, how do you feel about the fact that uh, Trump's going on, you know, now he's saying he's going on uh, Potentially uh, going on Rogan. Rogan. Uh, he yeah. was on uh, Friedman. He was on Schultz. He was on all this stuff. Theo, Theo, what do you, Theo crushed it with Theo. You know, uh, Nelk boys. How do you feel about all this stuff that he's doing now? I said, oh, you're asking it like, is that something wrong? No, no, I'm just curious. I said, I said, how do you feel that she's going on Colbert? She's going on Howard Stern. Howard Stern. View, call Everybody in May. Taylor Swift endorses call this person. This, uh, J -J -Z. How do you yeah. feel about all those endorsements? How do you feel about that? And the reality is the following. The new era of politics, this is the last season that all of those celebrity rappers, hip-hop musicians endorsing you in the mainstream, this is the last year that that strategy is going to be the number one strategy. It can be a top five strategy. It is going to have no wait like it did 20 years ago in 2028. It's not going to. Yep. 2028 moving forward, the entire thing is done. The entire thing is done. You know, the whole conversation right now, the, uh, Rob, if you can pull up the clip.